Ideal gas constant and molar volume of a gas. In this experiment, you will determine the molar volume of one mole of hydrogen gas under standard conditions, as well as the value of the ideal gas constant R experimentally. The ideal gas law describes the relationship between several variables that are important to know when experimenting with gases. These are the pressure in atmospheres, the temperature in degree Kelvin, the number of moles, and the volumeters. The ideal gas law provides the relationship between the above variables where PV equals nRT, the ideal gas constant R has a value of 0 0.08206 liters times atmospheres per mole Kelvin. If you solve for any of the any variable in the equation, you will find the units of the remaining variable cancel out, giving you the desired units for your value. Most gases obey this law at low pressures and relatively high temperatures. If temperature and pressure are kept constant, the volume of a gas is directly proportional to the number of moles present and one mole of any gas will occupy the same volume under ideal conditions. Standard temperature and pressure is defined as 0 degrees Celsius or 273.5 degrees Kelvin and pressure of 1 atmospheric pressure. And one mole of any gas will occupy 22.4 liters. In this experiment, you will use the reaction between solid magnesium and sulfuric acid to form a known amount of hydrogen gas. To do this, you will place a vial containing 0.025 to 0.035 grams of magnesium turnings into an Erlenmeyer flask containing 25 milliliters of 1 molar sulfuric acid. Once measured, this amount will be used to find the moles of, of gas produced and an experimental value to the ideal gas constant R. This will be accomplished by using the setup shown on the next slide. Because the atmospheric pressure varies slightly from day to day, you will use the barometer to accurately measure the pressure on the day you perform your experiment. The barometer you will be using has a vernier scale, which must be read correctly to get an accurate reading. Your first number will be read from the bottom of the scale, where the zero marker falls on the right-hand scale in the picture shown. The zero falls between 708 and 709, making your first inter integer 708. This scale can be read to one decimal place, which can be found by looking to see which gradations on the right-hand scale line up best with the ones on the left-hand scale. In the picture, you can see that only the gradations for 0.9 lines up with the, those of the gradations on the right-hand side. This means your decimal place is 0.9, giving you an overall reading of 708.9 millimeters of mercury. Because the hydrogen gas formed in this reaction will also be saturated with water vapor, the vapor pressure of water has to be accounted for when determining its pressure from the, this reaction. A hydrostatic pressure of the column of water also needs to be included in your corrections. Therefore, using Dalton's law of partial pressures, the sum of the pressure of hydrogen gas, water, and hydrostatic pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. This equation can be used to find the pressure of hydrogen gas. You know P bar, or atmospheric pressure, from reading the barometer. The partial pressure of water vapor can be looked up in the CRC handbook at the temperature of water used in the experiment. The hydrostatic pressure can be found by measuring the height of the column of water in the burette above the beaker with a ruler. This measurement should be recorded in millimeters. 
This value can be converted to millimeters of mercury by dividing by 13.6, which is the specific gravity of mercury. When you've completed this procedure, repeat it, but trade responsibilities with your lab partner. From the experimental values of pressure, volume, temperature, and number of moles, you can calculate the value of R of your experiment. Moles of hydrogen gas formed during the reaction can be calculated using the equation of the reaction and mass of the magnesium used for a given trial. Be careful to use correct stoichiometric ratios when converting moles of magnesium to moles of hydrogen. The volume of hydrogen gas at standard temperature and pressure can be found by comparing the values of the gas at SDP to your experimental values and solving for V1 as shown. Rearrangement of the ideal gas equation for each situation gives you the following relationship. Use the temperature and pressure values of an ideal gas and values of temperature and volume you recorded during your experiments to find the volume of hydrogen gas at STP. Finally, division of the molar volume by the number of moles you use will give you the volume of one mole of hydrogen gas at STP. How to use a Fortin type mercurial barometer. The Fortin mercury barometer is a type of cistern barometer that allows for the manual adjustment of the volume of mercury in the cistern. A cistern is a tank or reservoir. When the atmospheric pressure changes, the volume of mercury in the cistern changes and the barometer to be zeroed every time a reading is taken. In the top picture of this slide, you can see the cistern containing mercury and the white zero pointer. The bottom picture depicts the cistern adjusting screw being turned until the mercury is just touching zero pointer tip. Adjusting the vernier. Raise the vernier above the top of the mercury meniscus and then lower it very slowly until the bottom edge appears to be just top, touching the top of the mercury meniscus. When the vernier is properly adjusted, the white from the background should be visible at both sides of the mercury meniscus, not at the top. When reading the vernier scale, be sure that your eye is at the same level as the vernier plane. It is important to note that when you are lowering the vernier to be in line with the top of the mercury meniscus, your sight line is aligned with the front and back edges of the vernier and the top of the meniscus. Once the barometer has been zeroed and the vernier set, the measurement can be taken. Follow the bottommost line on the vernier over to the scale on the barometer. This is the whole number value. Next, find the lines on both scales that line up with each other best. This represents the decimal place. For example, if the sixth line on the vernier lines up most closely with a line on the scale, then the decimal will be a six. This barometer reads 718.6 millimeters of mercury. In addition to pressure changes, foreign mercury barometers are sensitive to changes in latitude and altitude. However, corrections can be made to accommodate these changes. There are other factors that will have a greater impact on the experimental outcome, and we will therefore not address these effects for th this experiment.